Hello everyone. Well, you made it through unit one and now we're going to start unit two. Unit two is a short unit, so make sure that you stay on top of things and don't get behind. Chapter five is going to do deal with criminal law and procedure. Why do I need criminal law and procedure in business? Well, I'm going to tell you in just a moment, but here's the deal. I could spend in fact, law schools do spend semesters on criminal law and procedure, and we don't have that. We have literally one basically or chapter on it. So I'm going to touch on some of the important basics, but remember, I'm just giving you general uh, laws and general rules. There's so much more to it. I'm going to hit on some of the important stuff. So let's begin. Criminal and law and procedures, chapter five. This lesson is going to talk about the role of criminal law, a felony versus a misdemeanor. Uh, we're going to review the burden of proof and we're going to talk about elements in a criminal case. The good news is some of this is review for you, most of it. So what role does criminal law play in corporate behavior? And stop and think about it. We have civil laws. We have civil penalties, right? People can sue corporations if they do them wrong. Well, here's the deal. Civil law is not really enough. Unfortunately, criminal law is really what is going to deter um, some of the corporations, the heads of corporations, because of the fear of reputation or a criminal conviction or more severe sanctions. So unfortunately, over time, criminal law has had to step in and the main or in place and help out civil law. And the reason for this is deterrence. Let's talk about deterrence. There's two types of deterrence and this is pretty important, okay? So jot this down. We have specific and we have general. Specific deterrence is trying to basically deter that person themselves. So we have a criminal law that says you can't kill someone. When we punish them under the criminal system, it's to deter them from doing it again. Well, obviously we're gonna lock them up. But let's use something like for corporate behavior. Let's say if we have a harsh criminal penalty and someone violates that and they are penalized, they're punished, that person or that corporation is less likely to do it again. General deterrence means not only do we want that person to feel as if they're not going to do it again, we want society as whole to feel like they won't commit that crime. So if we show that we're a harsh on corporate um, fraud, then maybe other corporations won't commit fraud. So that's the difference. Specific, we're targeting an individual. General, we're really trying to deter society in a whole. So let's talk about the difference of a felony and a misdemeanor. A felony is going to be a more serious crime. You're going to have a longer sentence and it's going to be in prison if you go. Um, and that's going to be a year or more. Okay, that's the big difference. A murder, rape, arson, certain thefts, embezzlements, fraud, briberies, those are all going to be felonies. And they have worse consequences because they're worse types of crimes. Now, when we talk about misdemeanors, we're talking about less moral culpability. You're going to have a shorter sentence, generally speaking, less than a year in jail. A, a little side is that there are some felonies that you go to jail for, for D, uh, repeat DUI and things of that nature. But generally, misdemeanors are less than a year. And if you serve your time, it's jail. We're talking like minor infra traffic infractions, disorderly conduct, a low amount of theft simple battery, things like that. The big difference between felonies and misdemeanors are not only in the punishment, but what the future ramifications can have. Felony has consequences, loss of professional license, you may not be able to vote, you can't sit on a jury, there may be some job restrictions. Apparently you can run from the, for the president of the United States though, you may not be able to vote for yourself, that's the only kicker. But felonies have more severe consequences, okay? So let's return, regardless of whether we have a felony or a misdemeanor, we need our elements. And if you recall, when we talked about elements, we were talking about it as the recipe, right? Elements are the component parts that a party must prove in their case, right? So in criminal law, generally speaking, and again, general, because there are some exceptions, you're going to have three major components. You're going to have an actus reus, which is the action, the actual physical action that's prohibited or that's required, you can actually be convicted for not doing something, such as filing your tax returns. We will have our mens rea, which is your mental state. 
you have to have some mental state and different crimes and different levels of punishment are based. Did you knowingly do something? Did you recklessly do something? Did you negligently do something? Did you intentionally do something? These are all your mens rea. And then causation, you have to cause something to happen um, due to your, your um, what you did, your actus rea. So your mens rea is what we call our criminal intent. And like I just said, there's different things. You can knowingly, intentionally, recklessly, and depending on how much intent you had, the crime is going to be the more intent you had for something, the more severe the penalty. And you may not have um, certain defenses. We have certain defenses in criminal, believe it or not, and they are they go towards what we call specific intent crimes. Intoxication, infancy, and insanity may be a defense. What you need to remember is that there are these different levels of crime, and we call them culpability, levels of culpability that you may have. So why, again, do we care when it comes down to corporations, right? This is what I want you to do. Your next quiz is going to ask you to write down the eight points from the lectures that were covered during the unit. So watching this video and writing this down, you automatically are going to have the first one and the first point on your next quiz. Criminal law is necessary for businesses because civil law is not enough. Criminal law is necessary for businesses because civil law is not enough. And remember, when I'm talking about this, I'm talking about to deter them. But you don't need to put that. You just write this sentence right down now, and you are going to get your point already on your quiz just because you came to this class lecture today. So what's our next lecture? Now that we kind of understand a little bit more about criminal law and that we have an actus reus and a mens rea, and a causation requirement. Oh, remember our burden of proof is what? Beyond reasonable doubt. We need beyond reasonable doubt, okay? Um, we know all that from last unit, right? What we need to know is why do we care about this chapter at all? And I'm telling you right here, and that is going to be one of the answers on your quiz. Please try to write it just as I have it, I will go back and correct your quiz just like every time else if there's something not worded correctly, but the system sometimes doesn't always catch it. Now, what's on our, le our next lecture? Our next lecture is going to talk about the limits on the power of government when it comes to criminal law. We talked about in our first unit what limits the power of government. We have some of those limitations in criminal law, but we have some even more specific. So I look forward to chatting. I guess I'm not with you because you're not chatting back, but chatting about you, chatting to you in the next lecture.